Uh, perhaps just a, a few introdu introductory remarks because um, I'm a bit uh, outside my uh, comfort zone. Uh, as far as my job is uh, concerned in UNHCR, uh, I've been dealing actually with uh, the litigation triggered by the crisis uh, rather than uh, the legislative reform uh, triggered by the crisis. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy to uh, be able also to uh, make the connections with uh, uh, the extent to which uh, the gaps that have been already uh, identified uh, and discussed have also um, triggered some uh, um, responses by uh, the judge, both at the national and uh, the European level in Strasbourg and uh, Luxembourg. So bear with me, but uh, I will be presenting uh, UNHCR's main uh, views on uh, the third package uh, and trying to link it to some of the judgments or pending cases uh, which are actually uh, currently before uh, uh, the courts in, uh, in Luxembourg and in, uh, in Strasbourg. Because uh, my role in UNHCR is to actually coordinate uh, the, the agency's uh, interventions before uh, these courts. Uh, so, uh, in the same way as we cooperate with uh, the executive and the legislative power, both nationally and at the European level, uh, we also, uh, in the exercise of our mandate, uh, cooperate with the judiciary, uh, who has become, as it has alre already been mentioned, uh, quite a key player uh, in uh, the management of the, of the crisis. <coughs> so, um, as it was uh, already highlighted, I think, of course, the, the crisis was a trigger for further uh, legislative reform, but uh, in UNHCR's view, uh, we have already been actually advocating for uh, changes in uh, the existing uh, EU asylum law uh, before, uh, actually, 2015. And perhaps it's important to remember that um, of course, uh, the quantitative magnitude of the crisis uh, was uh, quite compelling, but also uh, qualitatively and the nature uh, and the directions of uh, this uh, displacement uh, is a critical factor. Because when you think about it and you look at the, the, the countries that uh, these people uh, uh, went across, it is actually quite a, a, a challenge in itself to uh, the existing uh, system. Uh, we have more than one million people who actually entered a EU country, namely Greece, then exited a EU country, going uh, to Fyrum and Serbia, and then re-entering uh, the EU uh, through uh, Hungary, or uh, Croatia or Slovenia as actually the borders were uh, closing along the way. Uh, so when it comes to uh, the rules which were meant to be applied uh, at this uh, time, the very fact, I think, that uh, these people uh, were going uh, in and out of the EU uh, without actually being uh, registered in any uh, existing system is quite telling. So for UNHCR, the crisis itself, of course, uh, exposed uh, the gaps uh, in uh, the existing uh, legal regime as well as uh, the lack of uh, solidarity. This has already been uh, said. So this was actually, uh, uh, of course, uh, a, a quite uh, a momentum and uh, a realization that uh, a new approach was uh, uh, was needed to restore uh, trust. Uh, we're talking here about trust, of course, between member states, uh, but I think what the crisis also revealed is uh, the lack of trust of the asylum seekers themselves in uh, the system. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, it is, of course, a key, uh, a key opportunity, and uh, before the crisis, I, I still remember hearing, uh, actually, uh, uh, people commenting on the uh, state's fatigue about uh, legislative reform, uh, but the crisis I I clearly changed uh, uh, this, uh, uh, 
state of play and uh, there was uh, indeed uh, quite a momentum to be, uh, to be uh, exploited. What UNHCR has been, uh, has been doing, and this, this is actually dating back way uh, before uh, the crisis, is to cooperate indeed with the legislature at the EU level and the member state level uh, to uh, actually uh, assist in uh, the development of this third uh, package, trying to draw indeed some lessons uh, based on our operational engagement uh, in Europe during the crisis, uh, as well as, uh, of course, our expertise on uh, uh, EU asylum law. And this, is, uh, this has long been recognized uh, even at the time of the Amsterdam Treaty with Declaration 17, recognizing actually the responsibility to consult UNHCR in this uh, process. Um, as you uh, uh, may have already uh, seen, uh, we uh, drew our uh, expertise and our findings from, uh, of course, our involvement uh, in these countries uh, at the country level, especially uh, in Greece, given the uh, magnitude of our operation uh, there, as well as uh, detailed studies. The latest one, which was published a few weeks ago, uh, is uh, the study regarding the implementation of uh, Dublin III, left in uh, limbo. Uh, this is also showing how uh, some of the uh, gaps have been identified uh, in terms of implementation or level of protection uh, way before uh, the, the crisis uh, itself. Uh, if you want a comprehensive overview of our uh, stance on uh, the EU uh, uh, common European asylum system and the way forward, uh, I recommend reading, uh, if not done yet, uh, this uh, Better Protecting Refugees paper uh, which is uh, encapsulating uh, the main uh, proposals uh, and in a comprehensive way, the way UNHCR uh, sees uh, actually uh, an improvement in, uh, in this system. It's based on uh, four pillars, uh, only one of which is uh, actually the topic of today's uh, conference, but I think it's important also to, uh, uh, to remember that uh, there are uh, linkages uh, between, of course, uh, EU engagement beyond, uh, of course, the, uh, its borders, uh, preparedness, uh, possibly uh, to be ready for uh, a potential next uh, crisis. Uh, the uh, EU asylum law wants the people reach, uh, actually, the EU territory, and a longer term perspective in terms of uh, integration. And perhaps here, uh, allow me also to, to flag another trend that we are observing uh, uh, in the field in Europe, uh, but also already before courts. We've been talking a lot about secondary movements of asylum seekers, or people who haven't actually uh, even formally applied for asylum yet. But what seems to be also developing uh, is uh, another trend regarding secondary movements of recognized refugees in Europe. So uh, people recognized as refugees, having proven a well-founded uh, fear of persecution in their country of origin, recognized in Greece, recognized in Bulgaria, and still actually failing to access most basic rights as refugees. So we have uh, courts actually approaching UNHCR, asking actually the way recognized refugees uh, are actually being treated in Greece and uh, in Bulgaria because these people uh, end up uh, in uh, litigation before German, Swedish uh, or Swiss courts. And here that's actually a challenge about the prospect of integration of these uh, uh, refugees uh, that is uh, at stake. <coughs> so UNHCR uh, focusing now on the uh, Common European Asylum System as such, uh, has been issuing a series of uh, detailed comments uh, on uh, the proposals, and we are actually uh, still working on some of these uh, uh, comments uh, regarding in particular the uh, Asylum Procedure Regulation proposal and the Qualification Regulation proposal. 
but uh, as you know, this is uh, actually part of uh, uh, a long um, series of, uh, of comments uh, that we are making, uh, highlighting, of course, the relevant standards, but also uh, proposing uh, drafting alternatives uh, to make uh, the, the proposals uh, even better. Uh, so starting with the positive aspects, uh, because uh, I think even uh, before the reform, uh, the second pa package was uh, quite uh, uh, important in, uh, in many respects. Uh, the, the third package is, is intending to, uh, to improve uh, some uh, elements in the, in the right uh, direction. Especially regarding uh, the uh, identification and uh, the protection of persons uh, with specific needs, including uh, children. Uh, in this regard, I draw your attention to uh, an update of UNHCR position uh, regarding actually uh, an absolute ban on detention of children in immigration uh, context, which has been issued uh, December last year, uh, which of course uh, is uh, very closely linked to, uh, uh, to this increased uh, protection of, of children in uh, the current reform. The extension of the right to uh, free uh, legal assistance and representation. Uh, this is, of course, a key uh, component. And uh, no matter how much we reinforce, of course, uh, the substantive rights of these people, uh, if they are not uh, uh, actually in uh, a position through uh, legal assistance and representation to claim these rights, uh, this uh, will be, of course, uh, totally useless. The right to information as well is, uh, is uh, key and uh, the um, reform is going also uh, uh, making some progress in this, uh, in this regard. Very often uh, what personally I see in terms of uh, monitoring and uh, uh, actually coordinating UNHCR interventions before courts in strategic cases is how uh, little information uh, the asylum seekers, and sometimes even the judges themselves actually, are, uh, uh, have uh, regarding uh, the applicable standards and uh, the situation on, uh, on the ground. So this is also uh, welcome uh, in, in some of the new uh, proposals. Uh, and the obligation for, for member states to actually uh, prepare better and more uh, through uh, contingency uh, plans. Now, the key uh, concerns, uh, and I prefer to warn you in advance, it's going to be quite challenging to, uh, to go uh, in details into uh, uh, all the uh, different technical uh, uh, provisions of these uh, instruments uh, and the concerns uh, they trigger uh, in terms of uh, uh, international protection, uh, but this is again an attempt to do uh, to provide an overview. We can come back to that uh, uh, in more details uh, at the question time. Uh, five key areas of concern to uh, uh, UNHCR. The first one, the most obvious one, uh, concerns of course uh, access uh, to the territory and uh, to the protection space altogether in terms of. Uh, accessing uh, decent reception conditions, a fair and efficient asylum procedure, uh, and all uh, the other entitlements that uh, these people uh, have in law already now, uh, but uh, that some uh, provisions may uh, hinder in practice. Uh, the intra-EU solidarity and the responsibility sharing, this has been uh, said. Uh, clearly, Dublin was not intended originally as a, a solidarity mechanism and uh, some of the attempts to uh, uh, turn it into uh, or include actually a solidarity dimension uh, as are still uh, not uh, satisfactory to uh, uh, in our views. The procedural safeguards, uh, this uh, would uh, warrant actually a, a full day uh, to, uh, to cover, but uh, I, I will try to highlight a, a few uh, concerns that we have in this respect. 
um, the measures to foster applicants' uh, compliance, uh, which are mostly punitive uh, rather than uh, incentives. Uh, and uh, we doubt actually about the efficiency uh, of these uh, measures as well as uh, the uh, uh, continued gaps in terms of integration. Regarding uh, uh, access, <coughs> there are uh, different aspects which, which are actually um, likely to limit uh, asylum seekers' uh, access to uh, the protection space. Uh, and uh, the type of procedures which are meant to be applied to these people uh, in some respects uh, on a mandatory basis uh, are also uh, questionable. We talked a bit about the admissibility procedure. Um, <coughs> one uh, particular uh, concept of course uh, of concern to UNHCR uh, is uh, the safe third country concept. Uh, which was uh, at the core of uh, the uh, EU-Turkey uh, uh, statement and somehow in the way uh, it is being reflected in the proposal it seems to uh, actually replicate uh, at the EU level uh, the experience done uh, through the EU-Turkey statement. Uh, so um, UNHCR has been repeatedly uh, uh, advocating for uh, the need of an individual examination and access to an effective remedy in the application of this uh, concept. Uh, I will not go into uh, all the details of uh, the rebuttable presumption and uh, how uh, uh, or what an effective opportunity to rebut this presumption of safety uh, implies, uh, but this is uh, quite a, a significant uh, area of concern to UNHCR. The question of uh, how much the asylum seeker is connected uh, to uh, the third country uh, that the returning state is contemplating to uh, deport him or her to uh, is also uh, of concern. Uh, UNHCR uh, continues to um, uh, highlight that mere or uh, simple transit alone doesn't amount to a sufficient or meaningful uh, connection. Um, Regarding the admissibility checks, which are uh, intended to become uh, mandatory uh, in the APR, in the Asylum Procedure uh, Regulation proposal, again here uh, it matters to make sure that uh, all the existing obligations of the EU member states are complied with. Uh, and here uh, I think the, the, the courts have been playing uh, an instrumental role in uh, uh, reaffirming uh, the, the obligations and the rights uh, that these people are uh, entitled uh, uh, to. Uh, in Strasbourg, what matters uh, to have uh, uh, or to ensure that uh, uh, the remedy is effective is that the claim is arguable. As long as the claim is arguable or not manifestly uh, unfounded, uh, the full set of rights attached to Article 13 are applicable. And I think it's important to make sure that these uh, elements are respected uh, in the first place because lengthy uh, and costly uh, litigation as a result or, or, or of uh, inadequate uh, legislative provisions is in nobody's uh, interest. Um, so I, you have this, I think, in the, in the PowerPoint. Um, the debate which has uh, uh, even preceded uh, the critics of the, the second and even uh, the ongoing uh, uh, discussion of the, of the third package uh, concerned in particular uh, the right to stay on the territory for the person concerned until uh, a decision is taken on uh, his or her claim. Uh, Again, here Strasbourg is very clear. There is an obligation to provide uh, automatic suspensive effect for uh, any arguable uh, ill treatment claim. Uh, so uh, many of the cases we, uh, we see actually uh, uh, reaching Strasbourg court, uh, in our views, could have been avoided uh, through a proper transposition of the existing uh, uh, system. Uh, 
but uh, also uh, have been, uh, in our views, already uh, regulated uh, by, uh, by judgments a long time ago. Uh, so uh, we, we uh, intend to, uh, to remind, of course, the negotiators of, uh, of these existing uh, uh, standards. <coughs> Also, uh, an issue which uh, actually came up in the context of the implementation of the uh, EU-Turkey statement uh, is uh, the question of whether uh, admissibility uh, considerations of takeover family reunion possibilities. Uh, this was uh, in particular also discussed on whether uh, safe third country uh, uh, examination should be uh, preceding uh, the assessment of any family reunion uh, opportunities for the people arriving on the islands in, uh, in Greece. Uh, so this is part of, uh, of the position that we are uh, also uh, sharing with uh, the institutions and the member states in the context of the, of the reform. Uh, for us, the family reunion uh, shall be uh, prioritized. Regarding EU uh, uh, intra-EU solidarity and responsibility uh, sharing, clearly the corrective uh, allocation mechanism in, uh, in Dublin is to be uh, welcome. And uh, this was uh, uh, appreciated actually to hear that uh, the focus was uh, on uh, indeed uh, this uh, uh, fair share uh, to be uh, uh, actually respected. But we suggested a number of, uh, of adjustments uh, to um, avoid multiple transfers, uh, again through prioritizing a family uh, reunion, uh, and uh, avoid, of course, uh, onward uh, distributions uh, of persons who are likely not to be granted protection. So the colleague from the Commission recalled that uh, also this, uh, this morning. Uh, the procedural safeguards uh, are uh, also, uh, I mean, uh, in principle, the idea of simplifying and shortening the asylum procedure is, uh, is also to be welcome. Uh, but again, uh, we should uh, bear in mind that uh, reducing time frames uh, to apply for asylum, uh, to have your claim examined, uh, may have some uh, implications in terms of uh, effectiveness of the, of the remedy. And here the Luxembourg Court as well uh, has been uh, very clear in the Sambad Youth uh, judgment. Um, the uh, procedural uh, safeguards uh, uh, as well uh, should uh, uh, be uh, reduced uh, indeed, including for manifestly well-founded claim, because for some people who are prima facie in need of protection, the uh, position of UNHCR has long been uh, to promote accelerated procedure, but again, not at the expense of the fairness uh, of the uh, system. Regarding the punitive measures that uh, I mentioned in the, in the beginning, the focus uh, is uh, clearly on uh, uh, sanctions rather than uh, incentives. Uh, there are uh, a number of uh, uh, provisions across the board uh, which are meant uh, to uh, punish uh, the applicant for uh, a failure to, uh, to cooperate, both in terms of the type of procedure uh, being applied to these people, uh, the level of reception conditions, uh, etc. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the logic uh, is, uh, is of course uh, worrying uh, in terms of fundamental rights, uh, but might not even yield the results in terms of efficiency either. Um, I will uh, quickly pass uh, through uh, this. Uh, the alternatives we are uh, proposing are, uh, in particular, in uh, these papers I, uh, I mentioned, as well as in the recommendations to uh, the uh, presidencies of the, uh, of the EU. Uh, so uh, I uh, kindly refer you back to these uh, background documents. <coughs> On integration, uh, as, I, uh, as I mentioned, uh, a, a trend that we are observing uh, regarding uh, recognized refugees uh, who are dissatisfied uh, with the limbo they are left in while they have proven uh, their entitlements uh, to be in the host country. Uh, this is uh, actually quite uh, worrying. 
the fact that some states seem to be using even the Dublin regulation to transfer these people back uh, in terms of uh, uh, method and, and procedure is even quite uh, uh, of concern. Uh, so uh, I uh, will uh, leave it here to uh, respect uh, the clear recommendation from uh, <laughs> the organizers. Uh, but uh, perhaps uh, as by way of conclusion to recall that uh, indeed uh, responsibility uh, allocation and uh, convergence should uh, uh, work together. But convergence again uh, uh, should be done uh, at a level uh, which is in line with international and uh, uh, European law uh, to avoid again having the courts two, three, uh, four years later, uh, actually uh, challenging uh, some provisions which have uh, uh, actually been negotiated uh, for uh, years as well, uh, and perhaps uh, could have been uh, better thought uh, through to avoid uh, this type of, uh, of uh, detrimental effects. Thanks a lot for your attention.